welcome to this video. Um, this is Witchcraft Series Part 5. And uh, today, I'd like to discuss the performance of magical sorceries. Magical sorceries are performed in many different uh, methods. For an example, at the end of the last video, I mentioned invocations and evocations. But what is the difference between an invocation and an evocation, and how does it apply to ritual use? Well, an invocation is where you summon a being through your altar. Or say for an example, if you're more if you don't have an altar and you have um a drawing upon the ground, such as um the circle with a pentagram with a triangle connected to it. Um and all the candles and stuff and all the incense and all that other stuff that I mentioned in that video put together and you invoke a being into physical manifestation you can bring them into that circle that well not the circle part but the triangle aspect you can bring them fully into appearance there if your will and your desire is is uh, accurate one of the other things that you can do is practice with your your uh vision, your will, strengthening yourself to be able to manifest these individuals through an invocation. This is normally done through a ceremony. A ceremony is a method of calling forth a being, be it an angel, a demigod, a spirit, or perhaps even a demon. In Greek, the word daemon means two things. One, the daemon is beneficial to humanity, which means it works well with us or with you. Uh, this could be classified as an angel, uh, just for an example. Whereas a coco daemon in Greek mythology is considered to be baneful, harmful to the practitioner and to humanity. Now, an evocation, on the other hand, is more of a ritualistic process. It is where you literally evoke a being into yourself. You're opening your body up and summoning them to be with you, to share your body with them. It's as a more personalized relationship, kind of like you would with your wife, except for more of a of uh, an invading being into, you know, sharing your consciousness and your physical body. Uh, that is the difference. Now, how do we put this into physical manifestation of practice? Well, there are mantras that you can do. There is meditational practices that you can do. Um... Christopher Penziak has many different beneficial, um, how should I say this, meditational exercises through your vision, opening up your third eye and seeing yourself going through a net into a forest, uh, seeing the base of, of a tree going into the tree and going up a spiral staircase into an altar room filled with the same items you would have in your own altar room. Stuff like that. But he also teaches you about how to control your breathing. To get into that frame of mind, that thought forum, where you're able to go from the microcosm the small God into the macrocosm to become united with the big God. Okay. But what if you, that doesn't work for you? Well, there is witchcraft in theory. 
okay, which is a very good book. And there's at least five to ten pages just on various different types of exercises that you can do with both physical, emotional, mental, and such type exercises in it. It is a very good book. I own both of them. And what's interesting about these two books is they lay forth an application of witchcraft. Christopher Penziak is more of a historical, um, much like Humat or Humet in Demonolatry, who is the infernal um, librarian. And Christopher Penziak's books are full of knowledge, much like um, the grimoire of the Apprentice Wizard and the companion to the Apprentice Wizard, okay, by the Grey Witchcraft School. Very good books, a lot of information in there. And it's not just based off historical facts or um, mythological, but Christopher Penziak literally goes into these things and he gives exercises that you can do. Whereas the uh, Grimoire for the Apprentice Wizard and the Companion volume to it for the Apprentice Wizard gives a lot of information, but they made the mistake of bringing in uh, things from Hollywood, different belief systems within um, Christian views, and on top of that, the Hollywood-produced film assets. And in... They've also brought in angelology, demonolatry, the various different types of, of practitioners and such like that, but also a lot of good information on vampires, demons, angels, um, fae, uh, say for an example, the fairy, dragon magic, and such. They give a wide range of, of definitions of what this is. And they, they talk a lot about, about uh, the physical applications of, of what these everything entails within the various types of magic. But it, these books really don't teach you how to actually perform magic. So from this point forward, I'm going to be getting into the actual practices and the lineups and the methods that you can utilize to benefit yourself throughout your magical careers. Now, the first item up is keeping in mind of both invocations and evocations. What do you want to do and what you as the individual are comfortable with manifesting? Okay. Are you going to get into herbalism? Are you going to get into alchemy? Okay. I can tell you right now that I've come across some very potent type of, of, uh, compounds that literally will knock you on your ass for an example red sandalwood powder red dragonwood powder or dragon's blood powder sulfur graveyard dirt and mirror okay mixed in with um graveyard dirt and a little bit of of a sage literally will knock you on your ass. It's a very potent compound. And if you're going to utilize that alone, I would recommend at least laying down. Um, whereas I actually had barely had enough energy and strength, discipline and focus-wise, to get from my altar chair and my altar room to my bed before I literally passed out. Um, but... Doing rituals and having sigils, drawing blood and, you know, giving uh, packs and calling on beings takes a lot more than people know. A lot of today's practitioners do not understand the applications of bringing forth a demon or a being outside of yourself because they have not yet mastered the energies flowing within you, within yourself, 
And this is something that you have to master before you can master the energies outside of yourself. Doing ritual requires focus. It requires discipline. And it requires the knowledge so that you can will it to work. For an example, when dealing with a curse or a hex, you're putting in a lot of ingredients from the calling on the physical energies of a phone number or a person's name, a photo, okay? Dealing with the essences of a gris gris bag. Uh, say, for an example, um, graveyard dirt, rusty nails, um, sage, um, say, for an example, sulfur powder, okay? Putting these things together and actually forming that emotional thought forum of hatred while focusing solely on the energy surrounding that photo of your enemy or that um, that energy that is focused around a name doesn't matter if it's a person's uh, uh say for an example a fake account it is still connected to that individual so from this point on every video that is made based off witchcraft of this witchcraft series is going to show you and benefit you so that you can learn it, practice it, and be able to manifest your own will within any form, style, tradition of witchcraft. We have already covered the laws of the land. We have already covered the tools. We have already covered the manifestations of the practitioner's styles. Okay? That was just the four first videos. So today, this video is to announce the second part of this series. Consider it part two, volume one. The introduction to physical magic and how to manifest it to benefit you, to benefit your clients, all right? To manifest something is to make, give it life. It is like giving your victim a name. You're making it reality. You're planting their feet through the items that you use on your altar. And starting tomorrow, I'm going to be putting forth videos telling you exactly what to do and how to do it. This is a no hold bar. And it's going to show you not only the white light magics, but also the black arts. And I'm not talking these fluffy bunny type black arts you see every day on Facebook or on YouTube, where they s stick up their nose at black magicians, or those little pansies that can't even face blood sorcery and call upon demons. I'm talking about forging real connections with these beings, these angels, these demons, these spirits. I'm talking about calling them forth to end your opponents, to benefit your opponents your your clients to benefit your own life and how to manifest your very desires within your life not this fluffy bunny stuff that has that is considered to be sorcery today where everybody if you step out of line they're going to shun you and block you and kick you out of their groups now here you're going to learn the real deal here, you're going to see the difference from this point out. I've already given a lot of information. And from this point out, 
you're going to know how to do magic. But I'm not going to do the work for you. You, as the practitioner, have got to discern, are you in or are you out? What are you capable of doing? So with that said, look forward to the video starting tomorrow for part two of the Witchcraft series. Enjoy.